Well, good morning. Isn't it a bit vicious to be singing over the destruction of Babylon? Our reading today comes from Jeremiah chapter 51, verses 45 to 48. Let's see what happens. My people go out of the midst of her, and let everyone deliver himself from the fierce anger of the Lord. And lest your heart faint, and you fear for the rumor that will be heard in the land, a rumor will come one year, and after that in another year, a rumor will come, and violence in the land, ruler against ruler. Therefore, behold, the days are coming that I will bring judgment on the carved images of Babylon. Her whole land shall be ashamed, and all her slain shall fall in her midst. Then the heavens and the earth and all that is in them shall sing joyously over Babylon, for the plunderers shall come to her from the north, says the Lord. First, notice that there's a mighty call out of Babylon. God says, hey, We've laid out all the facts. It's just as crystal clear as can be. I'm telling you, before I destroy it, you need to come out. Come out of her, my people. Come out now, please. It is the last opportunity for you. Come out. You know, get out while the getting is good. And God, the true God, is going to execute judgment on the false gods. Marduk was the main false deity of Babylon. And why is God doing this? Well, you know, the false gods are basically props. They are false nutrition, false sustainers of a false view of life. They bring only destruction when people follow along and somehow think that these gods will, will do anything for them. So at a point in time, God removes them. But first, he's given fair warning. First, he sends his messengers with a message of peace. That's the way he is. The light is shut in the darkness, and although the darkness didn't understand it and, and wouldn't receive it and, and, and went intentionally blind against it, the truth, the truth was still presented. A substantial effort has been made to bring every person into undelusion. And the truth has its own power. God so constituted our minds so that truth would have a ring to it. Truth would have something that would, would get us to innately kind of look at it again and say, yes, no, that, that seems like it's right. There's something about this that's harmonious with all of life experience. So truth resonates with itself. And it offers itself and it suggests to us, it almost whispers to us, hey, you need to give this some more analysis. This is truth now. Pay close attention. So in the end, when God pulls the trigger, there will be nothing unfair about what he's done. He's given very fair, more than fair warning. They've intentionally chosen delusion. Come on, don't you think that the God of heaven and earth, who constituted our minds, who gave us the will, the conscience, desire, uh, intellect, don't you think he's able to bring to us the ultimate in reasoning, the most clear, and uh, the only people who that will still be tuned to error at the end will be the people who say, I want error more than I want truth. There'll be people who've consciously chosen the error. Sad, very sad. Imagine living your life, and then at the end of your life, at the last moment, everything's come up to that point. God has done everything he can to win you, and you say, yeah, I think I'll choose error over truth right now. I prefer delusion to truth and reality. But there are many who will do that very thing. So then all these moral choices have been made, so let's now talk about that singing. So there's rejoicing at the overthrow of Babylon, and, you know, it's not rejoicing that the wicked are going to experience remarkable suffering. It's rejoicing that truth has found its way home, that every heart that wants it has said yes and received it. Hey, imagine the universal rejoicing, the joy that would occur if it were announced that all cancer was solved and ended and there's never going to be any more cancer on planet Earth. I want to tell you there would be rejoicing from pole to pole and that there won't be any people who will ever want error again. That, I tell you, is going to bring a lot of rejoicing. The sole destructive philosophy of self-service will be over for eternity. And yet we'll still have free choice. We just won't choose self-service. What an amazing thing God is going to do for us. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for paying the price to clean up this mess for us. Salvation, we don't give it to ourselves. Lord, we just are the beneficiaries of the good that you are willing to do to us and for us. Oh, Lord, we look forward to that day. May it come soon. May everyone hearing my voice now be ready on that day. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. So, friend, it's not wrong to rejoice when everyone sees Babylon for what it is, and no one will ever suffer from it ever again. God be with you this day.